All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Culture and People Cast. Today we have Sam Kamani on. Sam, in a few sentences, would you tell us who you are and what you do? Thank you, Anna. It's great to be here. I am CEO and co-founder of Insider, where we are building esports for finance. And um, yeah, we're building a community-based platform um, so that people can learn and get excited about investing and trading. Apart from that, I am author of um, two books, 30 Day Startup and Business in Time of Corona. I um, have my own podcast, Want Money, Got Money with Sam Kamani, um, where I interview founders and VCs, investors, all that. And I'm also a venture partner um, with a venture firm called Indogen Capital. So yep, that's in short what I do these days. <laughs> That's awesome. And, you know, really from both the perspective of working with these venture capital firms and the podcast and working with people in culture, you're doing a lot around that. I, so thank you for your work there. What is your favorite thing about being able to influence this area of people and culture at work? Um, very interesting question. Um, first of all, it is uh, being um, being transparent and and being yourself. So um, for a lot of my life, for the like a lot of my working life, I didn't used to um, share and I used to be more of a hermit. But in the last year and a half, I have started sharing everything that I'm doing with everyone around me that whether it's by writing a book, whether it's sharing on LinkedIn, making TikToks in every way. And when people see that it inspires people around you, whether you're there, your employees, colleagues, people um, above you or, or anyone who comes in contact with you, um, they get to learn and they get the permission to do that as well in a way because they get inspired by it. So yeah, it, it's just the first thing is being yourself, being your authentic yourself. Yes. Awesome. And I, I, I love that you have made progress and during a, a, a pandemic, no less. So good for you. So Thank Sam, you. Thank the, you. Yeah. yeah. So, so, In fact, so I'm thinking it, it here enabled me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I did yeah. probably right. Pushed you right. Exactly right. It pushed me to to do the pod because I was only speaking at events and I wasn't doing podcasting. It I only got started because it's like, okay, there's no events out there. What can I do next? Where do people listen? Where do people yeah. consume media? And that was um podcast so that's why I started going as a guest and then people started asking me hey you should do a podcast of your own and that's when I was like okay let's let's do it. So yeah. That's great, Sam. So, you know, I, speaking of the pandemic, I'm hearing from a lot of leaders, just engaging their humans or their talent is a challenge. What are your thoughts on that? It is absolutely a challenge. Um, I am based for last 18, 19 years in New Zealand. I have been super, super fortunate to be based in New Zealand where we don't have COVID. We don't have, everything is back to normal for many, many months. There's no community transmission. There's no deaths for so many months now. People have completely forgotten about that there's a pandemic going around in the rest of the world. Uh, but we do have some remote team for one of my businesses. And, and even now, people do prefer to work a lot more remote. So we have um, enabled our business to be to be run in that way. And for Insider, we want to, even though we are based here, we want to do it in a way where it is um, remote enabled from from mm -hmm. day one and so it is um it is making sure that people still get that human connection because that is super vital um especially when you have remote um and you know because you don't have the conversations at the water cooler or or a, while having coffee tea together um breaks together lunch together so so enabling that so we have we're doing all sorts of things if you want um Concrete examples, we have like uh, every Friday afternoon, we have like a game time where we play, um, everyone plays or everyone suggests a different game online and it might be some simple game or something, but we all get together and we play a game on Friday afternoon That's um, so great. at the same time across different countries around the world. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think in this time where, and I love how you say that remote enabled uh, company and workforce, we've had to get creative, right? Because the yes. human connection is so important. I mean, for me, even, you know, I, we've been on lockdown for since March, you know, it's and and so that's been a long time. My kids were home for, yeah. um, you know, about eight months of that. And they just went back to in-person school here. 
So it was just a long time of, as much as I love my family, you're very insular, right? So yes. I missed those connections and, and being self-employed and being remote myself, I had sort of built my rhythm of, I knew how much time I could block to be in person and just have those coffee chats with people. And yes. then when those were taken away, you just really miss those. So I, I know that that personal connection is so important for you. And, and that is one tactical idea about the Friday afternoon gaming. I love it. it as a leader and as a founder, Sam, what other tactical advice do you have, you know, for, for anyone really who wants to advance their people operations or their culture? There are two things when it comes to people, and those are the two things you need to make sure that you give to your um, employees or to your people or your team. And, and those two things are number one is autonomy and the mm -hmm. second one is mastery. So as long as you have those two things in place, um, you do well. So, you know, if the, the key thing as a leader is you, you hire the best people you can and then get out of their way, give them the autonomy to show that they are the best. And then, and if they are not, and then, then support them in, in getting better. And that comes down to the number two, and that is mastery. So help them achieve that mastery because then people start doing things to achieve mastery, not just to complete a say task or a to-do list. So yeah. And, yeah. and then you yeah, I think you're yeah, to, uh, historically right? leaders have shied away from the mastery because they feel like, well, if they, if I do that, then they'll leave me. Right. Well, I think they're probably going to leave you anyway, especially if you don't invest in them. Right. And I believe I've seen time and time again, both from my, I was in corporate America for 20 years. Right. And yes. then now out of my own for five working with organizations from startups to, to big companies, I promise you that when you invest in your people, they actually stay longer and they perform better. So you're getting a better ROI, right? Absolutely. And it's also the like the mastery thing is that they improve. So do you want a B player in your team or C player in your team or do you want an A player in your team? And that's fine. I always tell them, you know, if anyone does want to leave, then you have to support them to, um, to, in fact, I encourage them to go and build their own products. So one day they can become leaders because um, normal leaders lead, but great leaders make other people lead into leaders. That, that's just my personal belief, which yes. might be, I don't know, may might not be right, um, <laughs> but yeah. I, I think you're right, Sam, right? That you're investing in those people and you're trying to help them get where they want to go. And, you know, every, everything from, you know, I had a, a, a sort of mid-level HR person reporting to me who had a, a secret passion that she wasn't sharing with a lot of people about flower arranging. And so we started with like, how about you know, a few hours a month, you, you go work in the local flower shop during the day, because that's when they needed her help. Yes. You see, if you like it, and we worked our way up from there, but she still got all of her work done and she performed even better because I was willing to invest in that interest. Right. And, and maybe Absolutely. that's where she wanted to go. Maybe she wanted to open a floral shop, but if I didn't help her, if I didn't kind of enable that, she wouldn't have had been able to prove that. And that would have kept sort of gnawing at her, right. And distracting yes. her from her work. Yeah, absolutely. And also you want employees that are fulfilled in their job. You want team members who are fulfilled in, in just in life in general. Right. I mean, we yeah. want that for ourselves. Why don't we want that for our team? Absolutely. Yes. yes, for sure. Well, thanks to the tactical advice, Sam. So let's do some quick shout outs. Like who else is doing some really good work around people and culture in the workplace that you would want to shout out or maybe even as a potential guest? Oh, um, so um, when it comes to culture, I follow Ben Horowitz from, yes. um, yeah, so he has done a lot about culture. And so, you know, if he, he would be the person to follow um, from um, A16Z, I think they also have a podcast and all that. <laughs> oh, that's I'm really story. reading his book. Look at the highlighters in here. I'm reading his <laughs> book right now and I love it. Have you read this one? I have, I think, audio versions, and I've heard a lot of his talks about that book. And yeah, it, it is totally highly, highly recommended. Yes, yeah, for sure. So when when it comes to culture, he he is the person to to follow. I, I would say, yeah. Agreed, agreed. And then I know you put a few more, you know, shout outs in here. Um, Brendan, uh, is it? I, I I'm Brendan Kumarasamy. He is. Yes. 
oh when it comes to public speaking and um and and all that so he is he is probably one of the best persons i know and and yeah we i catch up with him all the time um i don't know if you've had him on your podcast he's been on okay. he is insane he's a machine he's been in the last 2 3 months i think on 400 podcasts as a guest speaker <laughs> he i have never seen a calendar like that i think he was doing once in one week, I think he did a hundred podcasts or something insane like that. Like half, he does only half hour slots and he has yeah. like back to back to back, like 20 in a day. Um, mm-hmm. he, he is insane. He is next level. <laughs> awesome. So we'll check out Brendan and then we have Promise Phelan. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, um, she is, a like a VC, uh, but she also trains and she works with lots of, um, um, female and, and also, um, underrepresented, um, tech startup founders and helps mm-hmm. them raise money and helps them get to the next level. So she's pretty good as well. I so, love so, it. so Brendan and, and promise, I know them personally and, and they've been on my podcast and all that. Uh, Ben, I don't know personally, but I've read his books <laughs> and I've consume his content online. We'd like to know him personally, wouldn't we? <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And then we also have, is it Lomi Patel? Yeah. Yeah. So um, he's been on my um, show as well. And he's an author of Lean AI and and got some in really interesting um, insights from him on using artificial intelligence um, for your company or for your startup. I love it. Well, thank you. We'll we'll make sure we link to them in the show notes on LinkedIn so that people can look at their profile and follow along. Um, and then really the last question, Sam, is like, what are some favorite resources for you? We've already talked about Ben Horowitz, so we'll include that in the, the show notes for his recent book. But what are some resources, podcasts, blogs that have advanced your own thinking related to culture and people? Um, when it comes to um, culture and people, I like... Um, um, Akimbo by Seth Godin, which mm-hmm. is quite a popular one. A lot of people listen to it. It's like, it's, it was one of the thing, like once I had my, on my podcast, three or four different guests and week after week, they all kept recommending. It's like, I already listened to that. <laughs> so uh, Akimbo is pretty good because every right. time he has got really good insights. And then the other book I read, which I highly, highly recommended, um, I highly recommend these days is um, It's All in Your Head by Russ. Um, it is, I would recommend it as an audiobook instead of a written book because he is a rapper. And so um, it's read by him, I think. And um, it's, it's got his songs and everything inside it. And, and he's amazing. When it comes to mindset, there is no better book than that. Okay. So highly recommended. Oh my um, God. And just I, his, I have not his, heard of that. I have not. Yeah, heard of that his, I'm gonna check it out. his personal journey and all that is is amazing. It's I was like so inspired by that. I've re- I've listened to it like three times already, and I probably listened to it many times more. It's very short. It's just um one hour twenty minutes audiobook. Okay. Good. I'll find it on Audible and we'll definitely link to it in the show notes so people can check it out too. Well, Sam, you are doing such a variety of work. I'm impressed with everything that you're doing and I just appreciate what your, what your work is doing to advance people and culture, both in the workplace and our communities. Thank you so much. It's great to, it's been great to be here on this show. Thank you. Yes, of course.